The Callisto protocol is officially out and with it come a few issues that keep it from looking great but a few adjustments can make it look a lot better. All of this right here, this is all a really light gray, making the image look extremely washed out and murky. So the great news first, the Callisto protocol does support the HDR system level calibration on both the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. So what that means is if we set that up correctly, we should get a great HDR experience from the get go in the game, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not that simple with the Callisto protocol, at least. So that's the reason for this video. But I digress. That is a good starting point, And we need to make sure that's set up correctly first. So I only have the game on the Xbox Series X, not on the PlayStation 5. So I can't test it over there, but I have confirmed through various sources that it does support the system level calibration there. So what I'll do is I'll set the Xbox Series X HDR system level calibration up first, walk you through that, and then I'll do the same for the PS5 for those of you watching that are on the PlayStation platform. So on the Series X, to get to the HDR calibration, we'll go into our settings menu to TV and display options, and then right here, we have calibrate HDR for games. So when we select this, it will kick the display into HDR mode. I'm using an LG C1 here, but this should still apply to most displays. I can't unfortunately tell you how to set up every display, but uh, this should work out just fine. We wanna make sure of a couple things first. On the LG C1 or any type of LG OLED at least, we want to go into our settings menu. Notice I'm in game optimizer mode, which is what we want. And then I wanna to go to advanced settings and then under brightness, I want to go down to HDR tone mapping and we have a couple different options here. Now I'm going to select HGIG or HGIG as some people call it. Basically what this does, it removes all the tone mapping from the display and allows the console to do the tone mapping for us. Now we can choose to go with HDR tone mapping on at some point if we want to, but to set up this correctly, we want HGIG selected. So I'm going to back out of there. And then once we're in the menu here, we'll hit next. And then this may be hard to see on the camera here, but basically there's a checkerboard pattern with gray and black blocks on here. And we want these to match. And essentially this first pattern is super easy. Just hold darker or left on the D-pad until it goes all the way down. After that setup on this screen, we'll go to the next screen. And this one, similar thing, but now we're just working with the overall maximum peak brightness of our display. So again, you'll see these checkerboard patterns. We just wanna bring these up until we can't see them anymore. And right here, I can't see them anymore, but you may not be able to see that on camera. And if I look at my maximum peak brightness, it's set at 800. Well, for the LG C1, that is the maximum peak brightness of the display. This set actually measures around 787 nits. 800 is where we wanna be. Again, on this screen, we can just do the same thing. We go up until we can't see it anymore. We use our cheat sheet. Yep, we're at 800 on this screen too. So we are good to go there. And that'll give you a little before and after. It may be hard to see on the camera, but there is a slight difference in both. So with that, we are done with the HDR system level calibration on the Xbox Series X. Let's jump over to PS5 and get that done. On the PS5, it's a similar story, though a little bit different. We go up to our settings, and then we'll go down to screen and video and we'll scroll down all the way to adjust HDR. But we wanna make sure that HDR is on when supported or always on. Otherwise, this setting will be grayed out. So if we go to adjust HDR, it'll bring up a similar pattern, but it will start with the maximum peak luminance. And again, if I just bring this all the way down so you can actually see this here, this is basically a similar situation, not a checkerboard pattern, but essentially we want to bring up the brightness of this until we just can't see it anymore. Now the PlayStation 5 will actually tell you incorrectly to set this where you can just barely see this. And that's actually not correct. You'll be limiting the maximum peak brightness of your display. So we wanna go up one more to where we just can't see it at all. And finally, to set the black level correctly, we just wanna hold down on the D-pad until this setting right here grays out and then we are good to go. So now both the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X, if that's what you have, is set up correctly for HDR at the system level. So I booted up the Callisto protocol here and I'm gonna go down to the options menu, all the way down to graphics near the bottom. And we'll talk about this for a second. So performance mode by default was set to off. So this basically means that the game will render at a dynamic 4K at 30 frames per second with ray trace shadows and reflections on the PlayStation 5. Currently on the Xbox Series X, ray trace reflections are not enabled for some reason. I'm sure that will be fixed at some point, but just keep that in mind. However, if you're like me, I want 60 frames per second. 
if I can get it. So I'm gonna turn the performance mode on. Now what that will do is it will render the game at a dynamic 4K at a slightly lower resolution, but with the internal upscaler of the game, it actually looks pretty good. You will, however, lose out on ray tracing altogether. So even on the PlayStation 5, you'll lose out on those reflections and the shadows. On the Series X, you'll lose out on the shadows. Not that big of a deal, especially when you consider that you're basically doubling your frame rate and it's pretty rock solid. So now let's go down to brightness and talk about this slider. So you've set up the HDR system level calibration. That's good to go. What does this slider actually do in the game? So essentially it's an overall brightness slider, meaning if we bring it all the way up to the right, it will boost everything from the shadows, midtones, and highlights. What it will not do is change the overall peak brightness of the display too much. It's still going to be limited by how you set it up in the HDR system level calibration. Let's say 800 nits. This is probably right now at about 850 nits. So it didn't change too much and we've gone literally 31 clicks over. What you can do though, is if you bring this all the way down, this will actually limit the overall output of everything, shadows, midtones, and highlights. So this will actually be reduced down to around, I think 500 nits or so. So in my opinion, the best place to start is with this setting right in the middle. We can tweak from here if you need a little bit more brightness, but my suggestion would be to start here and then see if you need a little bit more brightness after we address the next issue, which is my biggest issue with the game, and that is elevated black levels. Now this is really hard to see on camera, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off these lights and maybe boost the exposure so you can see what I'm talking about when I'm in the game. Okay, so I've boosted the exposure up pretty severely, and now all you can see is my silhouette, which is actually kind of cool and creepy, keeping with the vibe of the Callisto Protocol. So hopefully you could see this on the screen, but we have a lot of areas, especially like over here next to the character and over here as well behind me. So all of this right here, and again, I don't know how well you could see this on the screen. This is all a really light gray, making the image look extremely washed out and murky. So what can we do to fix that? Well, if we go into our settings and we go into our brightness, we can come down and bring this down to around 46. Now on my calibrated display, this actually produces a really, really nice image. The blacks are black, however, there's still detail within them. If I go down any further, we actually start losing detail in the black areas, and I don't want that. I still wanna be able to see what's kind of going on in those areas. So my suggestion is to start at 46, and you may actually need to walk up to the display like I did and look at these sections and see, am I actually crushing detail? Am I losing detail there? And if you are, then you may wanna bring it up just a little bit. So the other option to fix this, if you're on an LG, you can actually bring up the game optimizer mode and use what they call black stabilizer. So if we go into the game optimizer, instead of adjusting the brightness on the display, we can actually just bring this down by four clicks until we hit the six, and that will give us about the same brightness that we got setting it in the overall brightness control on the LG. Now, how you wanna do it is up to you. It pretty much produces the same exact result. So after you've fixed and corrected the elevated black levels, you may want just a little bit more brightness out of the game in some areas, or you may just find the game too dark in certain areas. And here's what you could do. I highly would not recommend using dynamic tone mapping on the LG. You actually end up getting more elevated black levels going this route, so you have to fix it even further. So my recommendation is to keep HGIG or HDIG on, and then actually using the in-game brightness to boost it up a little bit. And you don't wanna go too far because you'll end up losing detail in the highlights. But a setting here, if we go plus two to maybe plus six, or plus five, and that will give you a little bit more brightness, especially if you're in a brighter room, if you're not playing in a dark room, which honestly, a horror game like this really begs to be played in a dark room. But if games like this do scare you to a point where you need to play with the lights on, then setting this a little bit higher is probably your best alternative. Now, if you've done all you can and you just cannot get HDR to look good, regardless of what you do, then another viable option is to turn off HDR in your system level settings and then just boot the game and play the game in standard dynamic range. You still need to adjust something here because at the default with TV 2.2 enabled, well, the black levels are still raised. But an easy fix for that, instead of going into your TV menu, is to just change this to monitor sRGB. And that will actually get you really nice black levels without crushing anything here. Now you can go in and make sure that the brightness setting here is correct. 
and you should see it's barely visible. You're not going to be able to see that on the camera. It's way too dark and, and underexposed for this here on the camera, but that will get you nice detail in the blacks without crushing anything and you're good to go there as long as you don't mind playing in standard dynamic range. And this does apply to both the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. So let's address these two final settings here, motion blur and film grain. Now, most people would tell you as a blanket statement, just disable these settings in every game and you're good to go. I don't necessarily agree with that, but in the case of the Callisto Protocol, I would recommend disabling motion blur. The motion blur in this game is incredibly intense to the point where it actually made me slightly motion sick from playing the game for maybe half an hour in the 60 frames per second mode. Something about the trails being super long, meaning that the motion blur likely has a really slow shutter speed. And so it creates this really weird smearing effect over everything. So my recommended setting here is to disable that. And then film grain, that's completely up to you. There's no performance penalty, honestly, for either of these. But with film grain on or off, uh, it is what it is. For a game like this, a horror game, film grain can kind of enhance some of the scenes, in my opinion. If you don't like it, you know, can turn it off. So with everything set up and tweaked and the game looking the best that it can, I want to talk about the gameplay for just a second. Now, if you were expecting a spiritual successor to Dead Space, then this is it. This is 100% it. It feels like Dead Space 2.0. And I know that the Dead Space remake is coming out next year, but if you want something horror that's not in the Dead Space universe, then man, this is really, really fun. I really love the gameplay. The melee combat feels visceral. And I've only played it for about an hour, so this is based on those impressions. But yeah, I love the melee combat. I love the dodging mechanic. It does take a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're coming from God of War Ragnarok like I am. I'm actually still knee deep in that game, so I'll probably put this game off to the side until they patch it a little further to work out any of the bugs that I've experienced, which I'll talk about in a moment. But overall, I really like the visual aesthetic of the game. And if you love that kind of Dead Space horror feel and you're really in the mood for a game like that, then I'd highly recommend it. If you can deal with some of the bugs. Now, speaking of which, some of those are basically progression blocking bugs that require the game to be restarted. And I haven't ran into anything yet in my hour or so of play that hasn't been corrected by just restarting the game. It is kind of a chore and kind of a problem to have to do that on a game that just came out. And honestly, if you can deal with those, then the game is really fun and I highly recommend it. Now, I do want to mention the sound quality real quick and the soundtrack, which does not support Dolby Atmos, unfortunately. I really wish it did, but using an up mixer goes a long way. And man, this game, the sound is pretty pretty great in it, honestly. And what I will say is I do think that some of the impacts could use a little more low end, but this game does have bass, don't get me wrong. There are sections when you're in the ship in the very beginning that made my seats rumble. And I don't even have, you know, tactile transducers or anything. I have some near field subs right behind the seats, but I never got any of that type of rumble in say God of War Ragnarok, which I'll talk about that in another video one day with audio on that one. But yeah, the soundtrack using the, the DTS up mixing in my receiver sounds amazing. You can use the Dolby Surround up mixer as well, but I've always found the DTS Neural X up mixer to provide a little more discreet sounding effects in the overhead channels than the Dolby Surround up mixer. So, you know, pick which one you like. Now, if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out at all, feel free to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of the game, what you think of HDR in general and games, and if it's just a total wash at this point because there's so much stuff going on with it that you just turn HDR off in the console and just play everything in standard dynamic range. I know that's something that people talk about all the time. So let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion with you about it. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.